What if I told you that you have a device controlled by Laura that has worldwide coverage? Hi everyone and welcome back to another interesting project where we're gonna look at Laura. Uh, specifically, we're gonna look at new modules, uh, the RYLR896 from Reax. The module is quite similar to the ones that we already saw previously on the channel. I'll link the video links up here where we tested the range and managed to get some impressive results. It's slightly larger and that is because this module is a bit more powerful than this one so we should be able to get even better results with it. So same as before the module is controlled through UART and it can work on 868 and 915 megahertz so it can be both used in Europe as well as the States. If we go to see some of its feature we can see that it has a powerful engine, it has low receive current, high sensitivity, 120 27 dB dynamic range and a lot more features. It's relatively small in terms of pinout. We have uh, VCC or VDD, which is the 3.3 volt power. We have RX and takes, and then we have ground. We have uh, a reset pin uh, that I'm not going to use here in the example. And for anyone looking at the specification here you are i'll have links to the module in the video description now for today's demonstration we'll be using the airy lr 896 module together with a node mcu on this setup that you've seen me do before in my laura testing videos this is my microcontroller of choice and i'm only using it to talk through serial to the module so it's basically an interface and we'll see later I'm also using one of the push buttons here to send a signal and I have two of those where one of them will be the transmitter and the other one will be uh, the receiver. Now if you paid close attention to the specification that I showed you earlier you would notice that uh, Rayax specifies the communication range at a maximum of 15 kilometers and in the video, I claim that we're going to achieve a worldwide uh, coverage and that's with the help of one other service from Reax, which is the RYC1001, which is an MQTT IoT cloud platform. So we're going to introduce a third device that will be the one that we're going to actually control where one of the modules using LoRa will act as a gateway that will transmit the LoRa signal through MQTT to the other device that will be connected to Wi-Fi. The RYC1001, it's an interesting product from Reax where you could have a dedicated cloud to send your MQTT uh, messages and uh, it allows you to control devices on long distances through the help of cloud so you don't need any other infrastructure it's relatively low cost and it can support thousands of devices and you can easily integrate it with any microcontroller so to make the whole thing work i have this first device set as the transmitters i'm setting up the lora module to be able to send signals and i have programmed the flash button on the node mcu whenever i press it it will send the message over to the other uh, module and the other module here is what acts as a gateway it will uh, listen for messages coming from the transmitter it will receive the signal understand what it is and then it will send that signal through the internet uh, over to mqtt and the final device will connect to the internet through Wi-Fi, subscribe to the MQTT topic, and whenever it receives the right command, it will trigger the relay that can have uh, whatever we want attached to it. Since this is a five volt relay, I'm using a transistor with two resistors there in uh, switch configuration, just so I can be able to control the five volts from the 3.3 volts input, because if we, trigger the 3.3 it's not enough to uh, reliably trigger the relay so we use the transistor as a switch if the, the final device uh, also needs to be controlled through LoRa, then we can have one of these in between additionally where it will act as a gateway in the other way so this is a gateway from LoRa to mqtt but 
we can have another one that would listen to that MQTT and then uh, resubmit the signal again through LoRa if the final node needs to be controlled that way if it's in a remote location. So with this setup, you could have both the trigger and the control device anywhere in the world as long as you have uh, a gateway that can transmit the data in between and it is in range. Now to demo the setup, I'm gonna connect two of the devices to my computer and the third one will be powered from a tablet. So let's connect the transmitter first and here on the serial console, we should be able to see it getting ready. So that's it. The first few commands are what we set for the band at which we operate as well as the network and the address of the device. And if we try now to press on the flash button, we would see that we're trying to send the message and that goes successfully, but there is no reply from the gateway that that message was received. And if I press again, uh, the same thing will happen, uh, but again, we will not have any reply. Now I'm gonna connect the final device that we're gonna control, and that is the relay that goes through MQTT. We're gonna see that it's gonna be attempting to connect to my Wi-Fi network, and when it does, it's gonna report the IP address that it has, and also, again, it will try to connect to the MQTT. Uh, we are using the iot.reax.com command, which is the where the MQTT service of Reax lives, and we get the message that we are now connected. But because we still haven't powered the gateway, the communication will not happen. So if I bring in the tablet and connect the device, okay, so this one as well tries to connect to the Wi-Fi and it says that it, and it connects to MQTT and it says that it's ready. So we now saw that the relay turned on. If we press, so you see that now the relay turned off and if we press again, then the relay will turn on. So on each press, we cycle the, uh, we toggle the, uh, data that is being sent from zero to one. So we can now ultimately control this relay at any distance. There's a certain delay because I have some uh, delays in the code, but uh, the whole transmission receiving and sending to cloud and receiving back is relatively fast. It only takes a couple of seconds, even with uh, the delays that I have in the code. Now, I'm sure that there are going to be two type of comments on the devices uh, presented here. For the first one will definitely be that we don't really need the LoRa. We could use MQTT to control any device anywhere in the world. And that is true as long as we have Wi-Fi coverage in the area where we want the, the control signal to originate as well as Wi-Fi coverage in the area where we want to control the end node. The LoRa here is just a, a mediator, I would say, where if, for example, this is a remote device that we want to have as a trigger, or if it's a remote device that we will, uh, want to be controlled that doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi coverage uh, near it, then we could use LoRa to extend our range and have it controlled on much uh, larger distances. As we saw earlier, I personally was able to achieve 20 kilometers and that's nowhere near that we, what we can achieve with uh, Wi-Fi alone. The second comment would definitely be that we don't really need MQTT. We could use LoRaWAN to control the devices and that is true, but instead of being able to use a chip device as a gateway, we will need to invest or be in an area that has uh, LoRaWAN coverage. A typical gateway could cost somewhere in the vicinity of $200, $300. Uh, and this only costs like a uh, few dollars for the uh, node MC and few dollars for the controller. So we could have our own gateway uh, that is both low power and 
that is also cheap that we can add in between our devices. The code on the devices is relatively similar and simple. I'm using the software serial library on both the transmitter and the receiver to talk to the LoRa modules. They are both connected to pins 14 and 12. And additionally, on the receiver, I'm also using the PopSub client that uh, is to talk with the MQTT server as well as the ESP8266 Wi Fi library to be able to connect to Wi Fi. I have a few variables here as well as the topic that I'm connecting and relaying all of the information. So here at the beginning, I'm setting the module to the right frequency, network ID and address. The same happens on the other one, but only after we connect to Wi-Fi and only after we connect to MQTT. So we are still setting the same frequency, same net network ID, but different address. And here the receiver is address one and the uh, transmitter is address two within the actual code whenever I detect so whenever I detect uh, the button at pin zero to be low I'm sending the message to uh, Laura just a dummy message with a simple counter um, nothing really fancy we can choose to send whatever we want and on the other end during the setup of MQTT we have a function that receives the serial data. Whenever a message is being received, we print that message and we toggle the Boolean value. So based on that, we send to MQTT either one or zero using the MQTT client and the publish command on the topic that we've selected. There are some other functions uh, to help us with the code and on the relay itself so we are only using the wi-fi library and the pops up client so we can connect to wi-fi and mqtt uh, once the connection is established uh, we have a defined callback function that we can use to check the payload so whenever we receive the data we check if the first character that we send is zero then we turn the relay pin low. Otherwise, if it's a one, then we turn that uh, relay pin high. And this is how we control the relay. There are some other functions here as well that help us to set the server, make sure that we have a running connection and make sure that we are always listening for incoming messages on the topic that we are registering. You could see that here, we are subscribing to the same topic as what we are transceiving and this is crucial so we can have all of the data coming in the, at the right place. And with that, I'm gonna end the demo and the presentation here. I wanna thank Rayax for sending in the modules for me to test and uh, play around with as well as sending in the access for the AirYLC 1001 MQTT service. They both worked perfectly fine for me and I'm gonna definitely use it in some other projects in the future. If you have any ideas about such projects, then be sure to leave them down in the video comments. Let me know your thoughts on the demonstration and the project that we had today and using LoRa and MQTT together. If you have any questions, leave them down in the video comments. If you like the video, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.